Hey everyone, Tony Menito here. I am going to talk a little bit today about staining bleach shade Flexera or any printable resin to an A1, an A2, or even if you need to go all the way to an A4, the same principles will apply. So I have some OptiGlaze color here. Uh, this is A plus and B plus, and these were made specifically for this purpose. If you want to add uh, chroma to an in the A shade range or in the B shade range, this is how you do it. I also have my Vita shade tabs to use as references. So here we go. First thing I'm going to do is start in the areas where we want the most chroma. So in that case, on a posterior, and I'm staining this molar to an A1, uh, I want to add the most in the grooves and also in the cervical third. So that's where I'm going to start because you're going to add increased chroma by layering multiple layers of this, in this case, A plus OptiGlaze. So we're going to start just with a really fine tip brush adding this first layer. You'll see once I get this first layer added that I'm going to polymerize just this first layer. And then I'm going to continue to add and continue to expand the area that I'm working. So in this case, I'm adding more to that cervical third, but I'm also moving up more towards the occlusal surface with that stain. Sorry, I'm a little off center here on my video, but you get the idea. All right, we have a little bit more of that buccal surface stained. Now I'm gonna to continue to add a third layer now, also uh, to the cervical area, but also moving up over kind of the rest of the tooth. So what that does is it kind of adds uh, more and more stain in that cervical third to give us the most chroma in that area. But now I'm moving up and almost up all the way to the cusp tips um, to just start adding a little bit of that A plus uh, over that surface. All right, once again, adding a little bit more in those um, grooves, in the pit and fissure areas. And you can, you don't necessarily have to add more stain in the pits and fissures. It just depends on what your uh, outcome that you're hoping to get. But you see also now I am basically spreading it out throughout the rest of the occlusal surface. We'll go ahead and cure that. And now I'm going to switch to the lingual and basically do the same thing that I did on the buckle. So the idea here is we have this uh, A-shade chroma and we're just stacking uh, multiple layers of it in the areas where we want the most chroma and maybe using just a single layer in areas where we want just a little bit of chroma. In this case, on a molar, that would be the cusp tips. Okay, so having that shade guide handy means you can check your, your progress every once in a while, and you can see I'm a little bit low in chroma still, so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna add yet another layer. And in this case, uh, as I start to get close to my intended shade, I'm gonna cover now the entire crown, all right? to make sure that we don't have any areas that are too bright. And going back and adding just a little bit more in that cervical third. This is not difficult with this A+. Uh, they really make it simple for you. Checking that shade tab, seeing how we're doing. And we're getting pretty close. And so you get the idea. You're just gonna continue to add kind of little by little until you get to your intended target. But you should, all right, especially when you're using a bleach shade as your base, you should at some point add some of this uh, A plus to every single part of that restoration. Okay, you don't want any one part being too uh, high in value or too, um, I guess, uh, low in chroma. And that's starting to look pretty good. You can see we are getting very, very close at this point. Okay, I want you to keep in mind also that uh, we are gonna add at the very end a, a layer of glaze, and that glaze in this case will be the same resin that we used to print our restoration. So in this case, it is Bleach Flexera, and I will show you at the very end how we will uh, put a nice durable coat uh, over our stains to make sure they are locked in and they don't wear away. So regardless of whether you're using this as a 
temporary or a definitive restoration, uh, this is a really good way to stain these restorations. And now we're going to transition to the anterior. So I want to show you uh, on some anterior teeth uh, how to add some chroma to make this bleach shade set of teeth. And I'm just going to do the centrals uh, to make them a B1. And once again, same thing. We have B plus optiglaze. We have our shade tab to use as a reference. And we have our brush. Now here, I'm also going to add a couple of other things uh, to make these look more realistic, I'm going to add a little bit of gray and a little bit of blue to the incisal edge just to give it the, a hint of incisal translucency. So using the same technique that I did on the posterior, starting in the cervical third, and in this case, since these, these teeth are attached, I'll also put a little bit of extra chroma in the interproximal area because you would expect to find that if you were staining a three-unit ridge. All right, but always starting in the areas where you want the most chroma. We'll go pretty quickly through this. Doesn't take long to get to a B1. So starting on that cervical and with each layer progressing little by little towards that incisal edge and curing each time to make sure we set those layers. Those cure speeds are set up there or sped up, excuse me, um, just to so I'm not boring you guys to tears watching uh, these restorations get cured. Okay, always putting my stain on the tooth in the cervical and then dragging it towards the incisal from there. Okay, that way if you get a little bit of pooling, it's in an area where you want the most chroma anyway. It's not going to hurt your restoration. If you really study anteriors, you know that they have a decent amount of chroma. Uh, up into the middle third of the tooth, um, and then it starts to uh, give away to the appearance of translucency, and that's what we're going to add here in a moment. So as we look at our shade tab, you can see it did not take us long to get to that B1, and it looks really, really good. I'm going to leave those laterals uh, unstained so you can kind of keep it uh, in your memory um, where we started. So now I'm adding a little bit of gray just below the incisal edge, just to give us a little hint of translucency. And I'm running it ever so slightly down those line angles as well, away from the incisal edge. Uh, and then I'll wipe off my brush and I will use just a dry brush to manipulate the stain that has already been placed on the tooth. I don't want it to look linear. I don't want it to look contrived. So we, we go back in and we just spread that uh, gray stain just a little bit to make it um, make it a little more diffuse, a little more random. And we'll cure that. And then I'm going to take just a tiny bit of blue and I'm going to put this on the incisal corners, mesial and distal. I'm going to clean off my brush and I'm going to manipulate that little bit of blue. Blue is a really powerful color when you're staining anything, whether it be ceramic or uh, 3D printed restorations. And so you want to be a really careful with how much of that you place. But if you look at anterior teeth, they tend to have the most translucency out on the corners and a little bit uh, kind of randomly towards the middle of the tooth. So we're just trying to give these a natural look. And as we look at our B1 shade tab, you can see that is looking pretty darn good. The last thing we need to do is add a little bit of Flexera glaze to these restorations. And I'm just going to show you on the anteriors how I would do that. I always have gloves on, usually when I'm doing this whole process. But all I'm going to do is take a really, really thin coat of Flexera. And I'm going to use my brush to spread it out evenly throughout the facial surface. And I'm actually going to do two layers on this. Now, really important that when you're doing this, you're using a curing light that has a purple LED because these materials cure at a lower wavelength than our chairside composites. So we need a special curing light to make sure that we are able to cure these materials. You can also put them in your Otto Flash or your chairside curing unit to accomplish this. 
but you want them to be set because the last step is to put it in a glycerin bath in order to put it back into your cure unit to do a final cure. And this will make sure that that hard shine stays and doesn't get wiped away. This removes that oxygen inhibited layer and gives you a really, really pretty finish on the tooth. And I'll show you that at the end. So in this case, I put it in my Oto Flash. I did half the curing prior to staining and I did, I'm doing the second half after staining. And so this is now fully polymerized. I will just take it out and I will wash it off. And I took some photos to be able to show you the result that we got along with those shade tabs. And once again, left that unstained to give you something to compare it to, but those turned out really, really pretty. I'm the Smile Professor. Get in touch with me on Instagram if you have any questions. Thanks.